Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Lebenspraxis Podcast, where we talk about the good life and the life of the practitioner. I'm your host, Josef Barz, and I welcome you as a guest to this podcast episode. Today we talk about the evening, what to do in the evening. We already had a podcast about the morning, the morning routine called Morning Routine 101, and I would recommend to listen to this routine because the evening and the morning they have to be understood as very connected to another and i also always say about the morning that the morning starts in the evening so already what you do in the evening is heavily influencing how your morning will be i also always ask the people that i coach if they own the morning and if they own the evening and that's not always possible for example if you have young children it might not be uh, possible for you to own either or you can own none like not the morning or not the evening but maybe if you are uh, having small children and you have a partner also one can own the evening and one can own the morning what does it mean own own means that you decide what is happening there it's a clear conscious decision what is happening that is not mm, determined by outside sources so also people that are working night shifts for example might not be able to own the evening or might not be able to own the morning if they start their work at three o'clock uh, to keep the society running but it's i would say a good goal to own at least one of the two if you cannot own both let's think about for a moment what are we doing nowadays in the evening a lot i think since the tvs came into our homes we have shifted towards spending quite a bit of time in front of tvs yeah nowadays not tvs necessarily in the classical sense but uh, screens like the computer screen or tablet or phone and what are people doing on these devices in the evening they watch something they scroll the internet they scroll maybe social media or they read something but is i would say very 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 common to spend the evening at a screen think about yourself for a moment but also think about the people that you know maybe other people you live together with yeah or other family members that uh, you had the opportunity to uh, watch in the evening because you're spending time together and how the screens have quite a pull in the evening to use them and let's think about what have we done before in the evening before that devices came in so before the tv was the radio but before that there was none of these transmitters that transmitted mm, information or how can we say entertainment from the outside world into our homes so we had books also not for so long actually if we think about it the printing press is not such a, um it's not a discovery that is 1000 years old as much newer but maybe we had books and we could read now if you don't have books what do you do maybe you socialize with people around you and actually socializing in a sense of for example playing games has been still much more common i would say um before netflix and youtube came because what is the difference between the classical tv and the situation that we have today in classical tv you had a few channels in germany i think relatively common that you had maybe 20 channels or something like this maybe less i remember when i was a child i think i could name 10 channels or something like this 
Yeah. Uh, so in each channel, obviously one thing was was broadcasted and that means there was not an enormous choice. There was a little bit of a choice, but it was not enormous. And then there was a lot of advertisements also. So if you wanted to watch a movie, it was actually pretty annoying. And I think the advertisements helped to uh, switch off the TV. But nowadays the situation is that you can choose from an almost unlimited amount of videos and i noticed recently i was watching something i watch um very very rarely i watch something in the evening so for me it's actually really special if i watch a movie but i think anika and me we spend i don't know 20 minutes to choose uh or maybe even 30 minutes to choose because we were so overwhelmed by the possibilities and i had some um certain things that i was looking for i was looking for uh, subtitles in a certain language and so on so it was a bit complicated uh, then we found something it was very good it was very yeah i was very happy that i watched it but it was interesting how much time you can spend choosing yeah and i think that's that's quite a thing that we can spend time on today in this time of of nearly unlimited or maybe not unlimited but definitely overwhelming uh, possibility of choice yeah definitely we will find something in the vastness of the internet on youtube netflix or whatever all there is disney yeah, we will find something that we like. We just have to search long enough. And I think this possibility to really get something that you really like, that has brought us even more to the screen in the evening. And when was the last time you took out a deck of cards for playing? Used to be quite normal, no? Something that you would do very regularly. Something where... For example, um, uh, men were would gather at a table in in a pub and play cards. I wonder if my generation will do this when they are fifty years old. Yeah, but you you see people that are fifty, sixty. They gather every Friday. They gather four or five people in the pub to play cards together. And nowadays we stopped actually uh, touching deck decks of cards. And also board games has become much less played. I recently posted in the forum that I have for my inner community a thread called Did Board Games uh, Escape Our Attention? And what I wanted to point out is that I think playing board games has a lot of interesting things happening, especially if you regularly play new games and you play semi-complex games. So not something like the old school American, US American games like Monopoly or Game of Life, I think is the other one called. This is... This is yeah, I don't want to call it a waste of time, but from my um a board game nerd perspective and i'm not really nerdy about it but i let's say grew up with a bit more complex games than that um for me it would be difficult to play monopoly nowadays but there are actually especially nowadays lots of possibilities from europe for a long time but now the americans have caught up to it complex games cooperative games that are highly interesting where you need to learn rules and see how to use them and implement them and also the social aspect of being together with other people in real life like really together at a table and touching material there's a lot of positive things happening actually for the spirit for the brain and for me, this is definitely an evening thing because I don't want to do that at 12 o'clock on a Wednesday, obviously. yeah. Um, but to spend the evening together with friends and family, 
playing a board game or learning a new board game, that's very beautiful, I think. And I think if you do this for many years, it will actually show quite a difference when you become old about health of your brain, of your spirit and that stuff. So now I already went a bit into what is possible to do in the evening from my perspective. And I think one thing, if we uh, make it a bit bigger than playing board games, is to socialize. And at best to socialize with someone in front of you, someone that is there. Yes, there is the possibilities of phone calls and so on and so forth. But I think what is good to do in the evening is to, how do I say, to leave the world a little bit behind, to draw back, to go, to retreat into the darkness of the evening and just spend time with the people that are really in front of you. Yeah. And then doing things that you can do together, like talking, playing uh, board games or cooking together or making music and so socializing is one big part but i want to offer a few more categories and one category is the category of senses and i already um i already went there now a little bit with saying things like cooking so think about your senses taste smell hearing vision touch but also inner senses you can think about right and we i come to that in a second but to use the senses in the evening so to have a very clear tasting or smelling experience when you eat your food yeah or hearing listening to something a recording or maybe you even have the wonderful how can i say what is the right word opportunity to listen to a concert in real life maybe in your city there's a concert hall hall where you can go from time to time or maybe you have a family member or friend that you're living with that is playing music sometimes and you can just sit down and listen to the music another one is vision vision actually we talked about no this is what many people are doing they use vision they watch something mm, and i think now it becomes interesting because the eyes are so strong as a sense and the amount of light that comes into the eye seems to be quite a thing um for determining or for having um a proper working circadian rhythm so your rhythm of your body during the day because for the the body is a rhythmic a rhythmic being you are a rhythmic being eight o'clock in the evening is something very different chemically in your body than eight o'clock in the morning so there's all these things about actually thinking about not looking at screens in the evening so some people say two hours before going to bed some people say three four whatever yeah but to have a significant time before you go to bed not looking at, at screens i think that's actually pretty difficult for many people so many people are spending their evenings at the screen that's their go-to in the evening and especially if they're living alone uh -huh. <clears throat> but so vision is there something else possible than looking at screens i would say yes you can actually also just stare into your room or you can look at a at a picture that you hang up in your room to make your room nicer and spend the evening just looking at it i remember a very strong moment with uh, someone I was going to regularly to teach him about movement some years ago and I was staying at his place and he had this um, big picture of the Retruvian man by 
Leonardo da Vinci, yeah, you know this 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 man with the like four arms, four legs to show the proportion proportions. And we just were sitting there on the couch, and the couch was uh, in the direction like that you were looking at the picture of the Retrovian man, and we were just watching it. Not that right, we didn't plan this; like it just happens that we were sitting there. And we were just looking at this picture. It was very, very strong. It was very strong. How this picture through that silence and looking at it, in a sense, burned itself in a positive way into the brain. And I think it did something. I think it did something with me just to look at it for this duration. Like to really see is something very strong. I've been to several of these big um, museums, you know, like in St. Petersburg, the Hermitage, and also in uh, uh, Florence, the, how is it called uh, in Florence? Ah, I forgot the name. Okay, but the like Louvre of Florence thing. And I realized, oh, There is so many pictures here. It's just so overwhelming. So what I did there, and there are Uffizien, it's called Uffizi. What I did in the Uffizi, I did a quick scanning of the whole thing. I was 18, yeah, when I was there. I did a scanning, quick scanning of the whole thing. So I went through the whole Uffizi pretty quickly, chose one picture, looked at it, stayed there for, I don't know, 15 minutes, something like this, and then went out directly. As quickly as possible, I went out of the Uffizi. That was what I did. And this picture has left a very strong impression on me because I really looked. I really looked at it. I didn't yeah, go from one picture to another picture to another picture. And I know in these museums, let's say I was forced to go into this uh, museums yeah because it was with school and stuff i think in prado in uh, madrid i went sort of like it was i sort of choose to go there but let's say my partner that i was with at the time wanted to do it a bit more than me because i usually i get this weakness in my legs and i feel i'm going to fall over in these places i don't know why but <laughs> maybe i need to become a little bit older for such places but I think this overwhelm, we can consciously decide, okay, let's look at one thing consciously and really look at it. And I think it's also possible to do that, to do that in your home. Or what I also like to do in the evening in sense of vision is I sit outside and it's dark and there's some lights from the road and so on. And sometimes there's a car or a person, but just looking into the, into the darkness in the evening yeah and letting this work through my eyes or instead of having the lights on in the evening you just have a candle on and that also changes tremendously what is happening with your vision yeah so there is alternatives to the screen but on the other hand i'm also not extremely concerned about looking at the screen in the evening, at least from time to time. I'm also um, always, in a sense, I would say, like realizing now it's the evening. Okay, now I want to look less definitely at screens and try to avoid it. Like I used to have a little bit more Zoom meetings in the evening, but also then realized uh, it's difficult for me to then go to sleep and sleep properly. So I make sure in the evening I don't have lights switched on that are very strong. Yeah, for example, also sometimes um, I change the light bulb. Like I have a few different light bulbs, like some that are stronger for the daytime in the winter and some that are softer and more red because there's also this thing about blue light and red light. And for the evening it's much nice, nicer to have uh, to have red light. Also in the bathroom, I have a light bulb, red light, usually like some, as I said, sometimes I change it, but uh, usually red light and relatively dim, like not very strong. So if one of us has to go 
uh, to the bathroom in the night or the evening and has to use the light which I would recommend if it's possible not to switch it on but if you have to use it then it's not super bright and it doesn't interrupt with the sleep too much yeah, and that, that I find very very useful so this is something I really take care of in the evening not too much light and also not too much uh, screens and I would say somehow I don't like my computer screen in the evening too much I what I I think somewhat a TV screen works better for me, although it's bigger, but it's further away. And that's quite a thing, I feel, to be further away from the screen, so the distance. Or if it needs to be close, I would rather choose a smaller screen. But I think there's maybe a bit personal taste because from other people I heard different things. But there's also something that you might uh, want to explore. I also want to say I never watch a movie on the iPhone or something like this. I think that that's definitely shouldn't be done. And that's something it's just wrong. Ethically, it's wrong to do that. Yeah. So always the biggest screen that is available to watch something. But with the problem, of course, that a bigger screen emits more light in that sense. But as I said, if I sit further away, I feel that actually is less problematic than a screen that is close to me. But smaller as i said i don't watch videos very often so i just do it sometimes and then i usually feel it like i feel that i sleep mm, like i need longer to fall asleep so it takes a toll on me and that's also why that's actually the main reason why i don't watch videos in the evening uh so films so regular that i really feel that it has an effect but maybe let's say once a month usually i watch a movie i'm not sure once a month actually it's pretty i th that's actually more than because i don't remember 12 movies that i watched in the last year it was definitely less so consider if you want to make watching something in the evening something special because i'm pretty sure if you get Mm, how do I say, sensitive to it, you will feel that you watch the movie. You will feel that your sleep is a bit different. And if you watch a movie, then of course, the, the earlier you watch it, the better. There's another sense, there's touch. And touch can be also very interesting in the evening, in different ways you can uh, have touch of course with another person with a loved one with your partner i mean of course with your uh, life partner but uh, it could be also a massage yeah something like that can be also a nice touch so that's social touch but there is also the touch of touching things, touching materials. And here we can open another category, which is the category of art and of making things in the evening. Yeah? Because let's remind ourselves we have socializing, we have going through the senses, really tasting, really hearing, really seeing, being there, being present being present in the now, in what is there, now, here. And what is bringing you into this now is the making, the creation of art or so. So that can be ephemeral things, so things that disappear uh, the instant you stop doing them, like singing or making music, or visual arts or like we say in german build like building arts you could say bildende kunst so drawing painting carving wo wood yeah making things crafting or writing also in writing there is a difference if you write on the screen with a keyboard or you write in this more let's say embodied way where you write longhand is the word i think in english yeah when the letters are uh, together uh, schreibschrift we say in 
in German written uh, how to say written yeah written writing <laughs> you would probably uh, be able to translate that with a pen on a piece of paper that's something different from a keyboard in the evening because it brings you more into this embodied feeling in the now you touch the paper you touch the pen you move it and this brings something on the paper you make music with an instrument it's the touch of your fingers or of your mouth making the sound or you draw something with a pen or with brushes you paint or with your carving knife you carve a spoon out of wood like you can see it in my video where I meet Simon the spoon carver I think making arts in the evening without the intention of making something that needs to be published in any way just making art as a connection to the now and to yourself bringing out what's in you and that can be of course a practice like you can strive to get better at what you're doing yeah but having a sense of hmm, how, how would you say importance and unimportance at the same time you know what i mean you take it serious what you do it is important for you but at the same time this is also seen as an evening pastime it's like you don't need to achieve anything you don't need to um, prove anything you don't need to prove anything to anyone with this art that you create there in the evening and in the art there's always the senses in there like in music the hearing and the touch of the instrument in building the hear the touch and the vision yeah in uh, writing also the touch and the vision and there's another category of arts which is the performing arts or darstellende kunst in german where you have things like theater playing or dancing video making i somehow have the feeling they don't fit so well for the evening because they are maybe a little bit too active in a sense but i know also that some people really like to dance in the evening but then it's often a more softer way of dancing and art that i like to do is video making as you can see in my youtube channel i really enjoy to make such videos like visiting simon for me it's a very complete art i really love it but i also because it's at the screen the cutting process is at the screen i usually don't do it in the evening yeah i would i sometimes have this thing that i would love to do some cutting but then feel like ah okay no it's not what i uh what i want to do in the evening with the screen i rather go take take a piece of paper and try to draw something or write something or and now we get to another to another category after the touch uh, after the senses and the art there's also the category of inquiry and nothingness because why not just sit in the evening maybe with a glass of tea or something like this maybe not a, a an actual tea but more an infusion or so something that doesn't wake you up and inquire or just be there doing nothing how is that because you know the evening i think the big thing that it should be is that there's nothing to prove there's nothing to achieve it's the evening it's the silence yeah from the seasons it's like the winter you understand the evening is like the winter with a lot of snow on everything and the silence that is there through the snow 
and everything becomes a bit quiet. So now you can allow yourself to just be there and do nothing. And maybe some thoughts pop up, come to your mind and disappear again. And it's okay, you just let it happen and you just let the thoughts solve themselves through just letting them be and letting them happen. You don't shove them away, you don't push them away. No, you let your brain uh, remold itself in the evening. I know sitting there doing nothing can be quite hard for many people. But if you are able to do that, then that can be so full of rest and it can enhance your sleep also in that sense so much like that you're already doing nothing before going to bed. But I have to say that also not for everyone always that works because what might be also needed and here in a sense we come back to somewhat the senses but now the inner senses I would say is to move in the evening some embodiment proprioception yeah? some light stretching thromb some soft dancing because maybe you had a day that was without all of this without embodiment just at a computer Maybe you didn't feel yourself during the day. So now that might be a good time to do exactly this. To spend half an hour rolling a little bit around on the floor, going through different stretching positions, or maybe going out and walking. And here also you have again the senses. If you're present in the walk, hearing, vision, smell, but also you can use it as this moment of embodiment, of becoming present in yourself through this act of simply walking. So you can make it more complex, stretching, blah, 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 all this stuff, or you can just walk. And <clears throat> I mean, it really depends on you. But I think all of these are good choices. Go through the senses, go through the art, go through the embodiment, go through the nothing, go through the social, whatever fits here in your life after this day that you live today, what, how will the evening look like? And how in general, if you look at a week, at a month, what is a good rebalancing for what you're doing throughout the day because if you are training a lot during the day then in the evening I think it's good to do something else but if you need to sit a lot during the day it can be very very helpful to have something that is bringing you more into the embodiment in the evening the thing is to make a choice and to be present there and to not let the evening just disappear in the sense of that you're very tired and the only thing that you can do is take your phone and scroll on Instagram seeing people apparently having the best life that you can imagine looking very beautiful and having lots of fun. <laughs> Stay with yourself in the evening with who you are and what truly interests you. Yeah? And that can be also, of course, reading a book. That can be also listening to a podcast. That can be all these things as well. But that can be also making something with your hands or eating a salad with a lot of attention to it. It's your choice, but choose. All right. I want to remind you for a moment that 
your support is highly appreciated. So if you find value in this podcast, I would like to remind you that other people might also find value in this podcast. So send it to a colleague or a friend yeah, and let them know that there's something here that could help them in their life that they could benefit from. Good. Let's continue being practitioners of a good life, of a responsible life. And let's finish with this one word that I find so important. Continue.